Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Zenithin, and welcome to today's video for Legends of Runeterra. Today we have gotten the first little peek at the new cards that are coming up in the next set, which is slated to come out on December 8th. The name of the new set is going to be Magic Misadventures. Uh, we also had a trailer today, actually, and in the trailer uh, it showed Ava, everyone's favorite cute little yordle. But we also saw two champs who are currently not in the game that have been hinted at towards uh, being released in the game soon. We have seen we saw Kennen and Ari in the trailer, so good uh, indication those two will most likely be in this upcoming new set. Uh, probably not going to be a long video today. Only a, only a few cards, three cards, were spoiled today. Um, a Bandle City card and then two multi-region cards, Bandle City Bilgewater and Bandle City Shadow Isles. So probably going to be a short video, maybe like 10 minutes maximum. Uh, I just wanted to put this out there because I know some people can't catch my stream, uh, but they still want to hear my opinions on the new cards. So let's go and look at the uh, spoiled cards, the new cards, the little teasers, if you will. All right, as I said, three cards, that's it. Sadly, not that many, but each of these cards has something interesting about them, in my opinion. Uh, so we got Grumble Slug, Yordle Captain, and Minion. Just Minion, the little guy from uh, League of Legends, you know, he runs around, you hit him a lot for gold and whatever. Uh, he's now in the game, so that's cool. I mean, I guess you could have argued, like, there were Minions as Guardians, but whatever. So. Let's start with Grumble Slug. Go left to right, like normal. Grumble Slug is a two man, two three with a tune, multi region card in Bandle City and Bilgewater. A lot of people I've noticed are kind of dismissing this card. Uh, they're like, oh, it's not that complex. Two man, two three, like fine, decent stat line. A tune's not bad, but that's it. And I'm like, yeah, but here's the thing that I think a lot of people are not realizing. And the biggest thing I think, the most competitive, thing for Grumble Slug is Bandle Tree. In my opinion, if a deck plays Grumble Slug, the most competitive or the best home for Grumble Slug at the moment, without seeing new cards, of course, will be Bandle Tree. And you might say, why Bandle Tree, streamer? Uh, one, Fizz. Bandle Tree at the moment currently plays Fizz. Why does it play Fizz? Uh, a few reasons. One, it's zero mana with Mayor out. And number two, it's a bilge water card as well because it's multi-region. If you play Grumble Slug, sure, Grumble Slug is not as dangerous as Fizz. Like it's not going to be able to counter spells. Your opponent is just like, oh, whatever. I'll just use a removal spell on this Grumble Slug. But it is a little harder to remove than Fizz, I guess, with removal. Can't Mystic Shot it or Avalanche it. But the big thing is by playing Grumble Slug, you're still able to hit that bilge water check mark for your bandle tree but now you don't have to play fizz and you might say aren't there other bilge water cards you can play well first off bandle tree decks don't play bilge water they have to play multi-region units and the other the only other multi-region unit for bilge water is shark trainer the seven mana six six with a tune no one really plays that main deck because it's slow and clunky by not playing fizz you're freeing up depending on how many fizzes you play you're bring up like one to two extra champion slots and those extra champion slots can now be put towards either more removal um more other units to help other units that will just help you achieve a much faster more consistent bandle tree victory or anything really that you want another like couple of champions like let's say you remove the fizzes and you're like okay no fizz i'm like what bilge Watt or sorry bandle city Noxus, I don't know. Like, let's throw in a uh, Tristana. Let's throw in a uh, Draven. Whatever you can throw in, whatever you want. Now, try it all out. That, for my personal opinion, is the greatest strength of Grumble Slug. Uh, you can also say, well, Grumble Slug also, thanks to its tune, you can be like, eh, it's technically a one mana two three. Sure, kind of, not really. But it does let you curve out really well. Um. You've seen it a little bit where people have played Shell Shocker, the one mana two one with a tune in certain decks. This thing is 
pretty much just Shell Shocker, but for one extra mana and you're getting two extra points of stats, two more health. And Shell Shocker has seen very little play in the form of scout decks. You would play it because you would want to curve out like one drop on one, two drop on two, turn three, misfortune. And by playing Shell Shocker, you could hold up Ranger's Resolve. So you could do that too with Grumble Slug. Uh, turn one, whatever, Fleet Feather Tracker or something, turn two, Grumble Slug, turn three, Misfortune. It's a pretty powerful opener if you also have a um, Ranger's Resolve in hand or some other one mana spell you want to be holding up, or maybe even a two mana spell if you play like a one drop with a tune as well, like Shell Shocker, in fact. And now the third way I can see Grumble Slug being played, and I think this is probably the least viable out of somewhat competitive ways to play Grumble Slug, and that is Nami decks. I just don't like this. I First off, I think Nami is just a little too slow in the meta. Um, I know people are still are trying Fizz Nami. It feels a little clunky. Nami kind of really hates units that can get buffed that don't want to get buff. For example, Nami decks mostly want to buff their elusives, say like a Fizz, a Burble Fish. Uh, back when Nami Zoe was a thing, you know, Zoe's and Sparkle Flies, you don't really want to buff the Grumble Slug. Like, sure, a big Grumble Slug is kind of a stone wall against most units, but that's a lot of wasted buffs you'd rather have on like a Burble Fish or a Fizz. So that's my reasoning for not thinking it's that good of a Nami card, but I feel like because of the Attune, they probably feel like it's a Nami card. Uh, next up, though, Yordle Captain. Four mana, four, four, Yordle. Uh, we still don't have any Yordle synergy, actually. I wonder if we're going to get some this set. Or maybe some face synergy, in fact. Uh, when you summon another ally with equal or less power than me, grant it plus one, plus one. So it gives a plus one, plus one buff permanently. I've seen some people be like, oh, it's not that bad. It's only giving it plus one, plus one for the turn. Some people thought it was only a temporary buff. No, it's a permanent buff. I've seen a lot of debate over this card already. Some people think this card's busted and needs to get nerfed right away. Other people think it's, and I'm on this side, other people like me think it's strong, but not completely OP and busted. And then there are people who think it's just garbage, of course, I guess. But my reasoning for thinking this card is strong, but not busted is, there's a few reasons. One, the meta is really, really fast. And this is a four mana, four, four. That doesn't really affect the board that much. It's kind of hard to kill on curve. I will admit that. Four health is really tough to kill on curve. You who are like, okay, turn one, turn two, turn three, whatever. Your opponent's like, okay, turn four, Yordle Captain. Yordle Captain, while it doesn't really do much when you summon it right away, you as an opponent, your opponent does need to answer the Yordle Captain right away or else you'll start getting plus one, plus one buffs to your units, which is... Not game ending, but really good because they still have to answer the Yordle Captain. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think another issue I think is it is four mana and the four mana slot is getting a little crowded for Bandle City between Yordle Captain, Poppy and Lecturing Yordle. That's a lot of that's three, four drops already, which is not a, not too many, but we're starting to get to too many four drops. And while those are all strong cards, you don't want to have a deck all of four drops or all of three drops or all of two drops or whatever, unless you have like a certain game plan and pay off of that. So, yeah, I don't know. The co You know what the card, what card this thing reminds me of the most? This card actually reminds me of Avaros and Hearthguard, kind of. The five mana, five, five in Freljord that when you summon it, it gives all of your units in your deck plus one, plus one. Kind of reminds me of that card, and we do not see that card anymore for a number of reasons. One, it's in Freljord, and Freljord's kind of struggling at the moment outside of a couple of decks. And two, like I said earlier, the game is really fast right now. You need a few turns after you play the Avaros and Hearthguard to get the payoff. I guess you can argue, unlike Hearthguard, this is a little bit faster than Hearthguard, comes down a turn earlier, and you don't need to actually find the cards from your deck. You don't need to draw them from your deck. You just need to play the units. So I can see this being played. I'm not sure exactly what deck likes this, though. Um. So, yeah, I don't know. It's a strong ability, though. It just feels like a card that I just don't know what deck is going to want to play this. 
it does curve into some really nice stuff though i've seen some people say like oh this is the buff kindred needs i'm sorry this is not going to help kindred enough or yasuo as i've seen some people say um buffs shell folk it buffs lux so like Lux Poppy Shell Folk might use this, but again, Lux Poppy Shell Folk plays Poppy and it plays Lecturing Yordle. So I'm not sure if it'll play this alongside Lecturing Yordle. Maybe it'll cut the Lecturing Yordle, but that's less spells for Poppy and less rem or for uh, Lux and less removal in general. So again, kind of a hard, uh, kind of a card that's a little hard to fit into decks, but very powerful effect, but little slow and just kind of hard to fit into decks. Now, the next card, the last card, the adorable little minion. Two mana, two, one, the minion, or just minion. Shadow Isles build, I always say Bilgewater when I say this. Shadow Isles, Vandal City, multi-region card. Last breath, create a copy of me in hand at round end. So it's not an exact copy unless this is riot wording where they forgot to say like an exact copy. So it's not going to have the buffs you gave it. So if you gave it like lifesteal or something, the copy won't have lifesteal. Uh, if you got like, I don't know, if you got the plus one plus one from your old captain, it's not going to have a plus one plus one again with the copy. Um, I've seen a lot of people overrating this card, in my opinion. I've seen some people say this is an OP control card for Shadow Wilds control. I disagree. Um, first off, you don't get the second minion until basically the start of the next round, technically at the end of your round. I guess they made it so, like, created... I'm actually... Sh I feel like the reason it's worded that way, create a copy at the round end instead of round start, or, like, create a copy of me in hand at the next round start or whatever you would call it, is to prevent, like, the whole, like, if you've drawn or added two plus cards to your hand synergy, which wouldn't even be that strong, you know, like, some fumes or something. Um. So, yeah. This card, it's fine. So it's not an infinite amount of blockers, as I've seen some people say, because like it will block one unit, and then you gotta wait until you can play it again, and then you gotta replay it. That's another two mana. Even in a late game, two mana for a unit is still a somewhat sizable, not a non-negligible investment. Um, I've seen some people even say this is literally just better hapless aristocrat. This is not better hapless aristocrat. Uh, one, it comes down a turn later, uh, and two, Aristocrat doesn't really need as much of a mana investment for two bodies. Let's assume, like, just two bodies. For one mana, you're getting two bodies with Aristocrat. You have to spend four mana with a minion to get two bodies. Sure, they're two ones compared to the Aristocrat's one one body in the spiders, but that's a lot more mana. Three extra mana compared to the one mana that um, Aristocrat needed. Now, I'm not saying this card is bad. I do think this card is actually good. I think this card is also a card that is asking to be broken somehow. I've seen some people say like, oh, what about Snapvine? Sure, but Snapvine's a meme. Okay, we all know that by now, right? Uh, other people are saying like, oh, this is great for Tristana. I'm like, yeah, I don't really see the Tristana synergy. Like, I see a little bit of it. It's a multi-region card for Tristana, so it helps level up Tristana quickly. Uh, gets the buff with Tristana too to get impact and it helps buff Tristana as well, but that's not a big synergy boost, but I see it. What I do think of this card when I see it is I look at it as somewhat like Lost Soul for discard decks, but instead of for discard decks, for like self-sacrifice decks, uh, self-slay decks, whatever you want to call it. Decks with cards that kill your own units. So, you know, think like things like Glimpse Beyond, Spirit Leech, uh, Ravenous Butcher? Is that the name of the zero mana 3-2 guy? Cards like that are the kind of cards you want to play with this guy, in my opinion. Uh, so, you know, like Blighted Caretaker, the three mana 1-1 one, one that creates two saplings when you kill something. Is that good? I think, yes, I think a way to get near infinite sacrifice fodder, granted you have to keep playing it over and over, is pretty good. Uh, you might say like, oh, streamer, you could do that before with um The Undying. I think that's the name of the card, the three mana two, two. 
that when it dies, it comes back at the start of the next turn, but with plus one, plus one stats, true, but you couldn't block with that card, which made it kind of bad. So I can see this as like a one or two of in those kind of decks, but self-slay kind of decks, you know, Nasus decks, Kindra decks, those aren't really that strong at the moment. But I like the card. It's very cute, enables a lot of interesting strategies, so I'm a big fan of it. So yeah, that's going to be it for all the cards. Like I said, not a very long video, but I think I was able to talk a lot about these three cards and give uh, good explanations of what I think these cards can be used for, the kind of decks that can go in in theory. Of course, with more and more cards being released with each and every single day of spoilers, who knows, maybe there'll be some synergies we haven't seen yet. So we'll have to see you until then. Anyway, though, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I would love to hear any of your opinions on these cards down in the comments below. Maybe you think Minion is actually busted and I'm stupid. Uh, maybe you think Captain is busted and I'm stupid too, or you think Grumble Slug's useless. I'd love to hear any of your opinions and what kind of decks you would like to try these cards in. Of course. Uh, so yeah, leave a comment below if you have any ideas. Also, if you guys just enjoyed the video in general, I'd love it if you could leave a like or a comment below as well and if you guys want to keep up with the legends of rune terra content you can always go and subscribe to the channel also if you want to watch me play some legends of rune terra you can go and check me out over on twitch at twitch.tv slash where i stream pretty much every single day anyway though with that all said and done thank you all again once more for watching this video and until i see you guys in the next one uh bye